suffering from a terminal illness. A young girl enjoys her time playing ultimate games. However, death grants her a surprising gift, the gift of love. Reborn in her favorite game, not as the heroine, but as a despised villainess fated to die. Knowing the game's story, she charms the game's dangerous final boss for survival, but unexpectedly finds herself trapped in his demonic charms. Now, she must rewrite the story, not just for survival, but also to save her lover from the heroine and change her fate so she can live happily ever after with her true love. This is the heart racing tale of I'm the villainess, so I'm taming the final boss. So let's get started and watch this tale unravel. In a posh mansion filled with nobles, Eileen Lauren Dautrick is publicly dumped by her fiancé, Crown Prince Cedric Jean Elmire. Shocked, Eileen recalls memories from her past life, realizing she's the heroine of the game she's been reborn into. Spotting her ex-fiancé with Lydia Rainworth, the holy sword maiden and heroine of the game. Eileen calms down and gracefully accepts Cedric's rejection, her unexpected disinterest angering him. After all the drama, Eileen goes to a balcony for some fresh air. There, she remembers that in her current game, Regalia of Saints, Demons, and Maidens, Lydia is the holy sword maiden who will battle and slay the awakened demon lord in the end. Feeling embarrassed, she also remembers that Eileen will get squashed pathetically under the Demon Lord's foot in the final battle. To avoid her impending death, Eileen leaves for an adventure to tame the Demon Lord. On a journey to his castle, she enters a creepy forest where the disturbing voices warn her to return. However, Eileen presses on, facing crows mocking her for the recent breakup, even reaching the Demon Lord's ears. Unbothered, she reaches the Demon Lord's castle entrance and meets Claude Jean Elmire the demon lord whose charm she came unprepared for. After blushing furiously, Eileen begins her mission to tame the demon lord by proposing marriage, of course. In Claude's anger, a lightning strike knocks Eileen unconscious and triggers a memory. The young Eileen was always behind her royal brothers and considered herself useless. When Prince Cedric confessed his love for her, it gave her confidence and the motivation to work hard to become a good queen. However, the jealous people around her mocked her and called her arrogant for acting like she was already the queen. After this memory fades, Eileen wakes up in Claude's castle, overhearing that the thunder was shock, not anger. Claude's two assistants, a human named Keith and a demon called Belzelba, wondered if their lord wanted to accept this young lady. But Claude suspects it's a trap. Aware of Claude's demonic powers, Eileen continues her bold plan to prevent his awakening by bringing up marriage once again. Of course. Claude orders Eileen to be thrown out, but Eileen remains stubborn. This makes Claude wonder if she already likes him after their first meeting with a shy blush. But Eileen is a bit too honest for her own good and says, no, like a total idiot. The heartbroken demon lord summons tornadoes out of sadness and accuses Eileen of being a seductress going after her fiancé's brother after getting dumped. This offends Eileen, who thinks she doesn't deserve to cry forever after just one rejection. Then. After her bold words, Eileen realizes the state of her torn shoes and dress and apologizes to Claude for showing up with such a poor appearance. However, Claude shows some kindness and repairs her dress with magic. The happy Eileen thanks Claude with a bright smile, leaving him shocked and happy enough to sprout flowers everywhere. Unfortunately, Claude seems tired of Eileen's antics now and teleports her back to her house. There, her father, the Prime Minister, seems more upset that Eileen wasn't hurt by the engagement instead of the news of his daughter getting dumped. He then hands her the invitation to Lilia's engagement ceremony. Eileen accepts the invite, realizing she needs Claude's help against Cedric. However, Claude has erected a magic barrier to keep her out, leading Eileen to complain and bribe her way in with a cute ribbon. A crow demon named Almond happily accepts the ribbon, but Eileen tricks him with a drug cookie to force Claude's appearance. To check if it's okay, Claude also eats a cookie. Shocked by Eileen's shamelessness when he learns it was drugged with a love potion. Shamelessly, Eileen reveals she just wanted him to attend the ball with her without question, but Claude remains unaffected and returns with her to his castle. There, Claude receives news that humans kidnapped a Fenrir cub, and Eileen offers to help retrieve it to earn Claude's favor. This adventure brings her face to face with Cedric and Lilia, who accuse Eileen for capturing the demon, potentially starting a war between their kingdom and the demons. Claude appears clearing Eileen's name and thanks her for preventing conflict. In a magic carriage, Claude seems amazed that Eileen is actually looking like an ordinary girl, 
which offends her. He thinks that she isn't like other girls and is a strong and secretive person who doesn't cry easily. He asks about her intentions for proposing to him, and Eileen gives in and tells him that she's actually the villainess in a video game and Claude is the final boss who will kill her. Of course, this angers Claude who thinks she's making fun of him, and he suddenly drops her back to the ground, telling her he'll attend the banquet with her. Eileen is surprised and notices Claude smiling, to which he responds that he'd be happy to get to see her cry someday. After Claude leaves, Eileen nervously wonders if she can change her fate of dying in this world. And you can change my fate from dying by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Okay, it's not that dramatic. I guess I won't die, but I'm dying for you to hear about all the fun stories I'm sharing in the shoujo genre. Like villainous anime? I got that. Like isekai? I got that too. Maybe you're not that interested in keeping up with the weekly series, but want anime that are already completed. Well, here's the playlist for you. So come on, hit that subscribe and give me a like. The next morning, Eileen learns from her father that Cedric will take over the Daltrick family businesses over her, and now she has to recover her family's losses while managing her personal problems. Determined to recover her family's losses, Eileen seeks assistance from an old friend, Jasper. Afterward, she revisits Claude's castle where she requests him to let workers whom Cedric unreasonably fired repair his broken old castle. To Eileen's surprise, Claude quickly agrees. He asks Keith about the Demon Lord's missing pension and Keith's salary, which seems to be taken by other nobles. Eileen tells her that she's requested Jasper to look into this matter, which surprises Claude. As he leans in to confirm Eileen's intentions, she shyly avoids him. She also asks Claude for some of his land to build a farm, which he accepts. Before Eileen leaves her work, Claude turns her shadow into a demon gateway from which the cute Fenrir cub appears. Eileen names it Ribbon and leaves the castle with a demon's trust. As Eileen steps outside, she is met with skepticism from her friend Jasper, who wonders about the demon lord's willingness to allow humans to work on his castle. Eileen, who had stayed up all night studying law, confirms that it's a legal action. Jasper is amazed and compliments Eileen for being so hardworking. Suddenly, a strong wind blows, and Beelzebuth appears to warn Jasper for offending Claude. He wonders when he did that and suddenly realizes why the Demon Lord might have gotten into a bad mood. Leaving a confused Eileen in the dark, Jasper greets some more friends, Architect Donnie, Dr. Ruck, Botanist Quartz, and Eileen's classmate, Isaac. The three of them begin proposing all sorts of wacky ideas for the Demon Lord's palace. Drawing a massive gust of wind, Keith approaches them to take them to the palace and calm Claude down. Inside, they learn that the palace is broken but maintained by Claude's magic. Claude requests that the workers fix the castle and make it comfortable for all demons. After they leave, Eileen notices the stormy weather and asks Claude why he's angry. He seems somewhat jealous of Eileen's friends, but she tells him they're trusted allies she needs to recover the losses for her family. Claude nods, still confused about why he's so angry about it before leaving. Eileen remains confused, but Keith tells her the weather has gotten better. Eileen then gets to work and instructs her team to develop a cosmetic product for her new business. Her motivation is more personal since Eileen doesn't want Claude to look more beautiful than her at the banquet. As Eileen's project comes along, she remains unaware that Cedric has caught wind of her endeavors and is growing increasingly concerned. He wonders if Eileen has grown feelings for his older brother. Back at the castle, Eileen is making good progress with her precious lotion, and Keith comes back after sorting Claude's finances. Eileen wonders why he didn't go after the corrupt nobles stealing from him, and Keith points out that it would have required him to reveal Claude's broken status. As Eileen looks forward to looking good at the ball, Claude vanishes without saying a word, which makes her think he doesn't believe in her. Keith reassures her that he's probably just too embarrassed to admit how excited he is. As night falls, Beelzebuth rudely enters Eileen's room without knocking for a very creepy purpose, to learn good manners for the banquet with Claude. Taking advantage of the innocent demon, Eileen makes him beg first to get her teaching. The next day, Eileen stands with Claude, happy watching the demons and humans working together on the castle. Unfortunately, this peaceful moment is interrupted when Keith and Jasper approach them with news that Lilia has been receiving threats to call off her engagement with Cedric under Eileen's name. Thinking about the letters used to prove her threats, Eileen tries sending Almond to investigate, but Claude doesn't want him to get hurt. Upon Eileen's request, though, he agrees, saying he sometimes wants to spoil her rotten. This very romantic gesture is out of pocket for Eileen, and makes Keith and Jasper quietly make room for them. As Eileen wonders whether to make a move on Claude or not, 
Elsewhere, Cedric takes measures to comfort Lilia after the threats, harboring a determination to make Eileen pay for her actions. Later, Almond discovers a threatening letter supposedly from Eileen in a garbage bin. Two months of preparation pass after this investigation, and Eileen, happy to wear a dress gifted by Claude, attends the banquet. Her father teases her about seducing Cedric for compensation. Inside, she learns about her company's beauty cream success. Isaac informs her about Lilia missing and Claude retrieving demons. Eileen, ready for battle, encounters Cedric, who makes an announcement. Meanwhile, Back in the demonic forest, Belzebuth finds Lilia and brings her to Claude. Inside his castle, Lilia claims she's worried about Claude, who is all alone, but he tells her he's aware of all the Imperial soldiers surrounding his forest. Lilia claims they came on Cedric's orders, saying that she needs protection after receiving the threats. However, Claude calls her out for writing the threats herself, which Lilia accepts, saying she needs to do it to stop Eileen, who plans on kidnapping her. Claude remains unconvinced, even after Lilia sweetly begs him to let her help him. Bezelbilth gets annoyed with her and tries pushing her away, but her body shocks him and sends him into pain. With tears in her eyes, Lilia asks Claude to get along with her, but her sight reminds him of Eileen. Claude gets annoyed that Cedric would choose Lilia over the cuter Eileen, and teleports Lilia back to her house before leaving to attend the banquet. Back at the banquet, Cedric accuses Eileen of threatening Lilia due to lingering feelings. When Eileen denies any such feelings, Cedric goes crazy with rage. Forgetting all etiquette, he forcefully grabs her, but Claude's grand entrance interrupts his harsh display. Claude dismisses Cedric, compliments Eileen, and asks her to break her engagement with Cedric. Before doing so, in a dramatic turn of events, Eileen proves the origin of the threat letters to be from the same document as her invitation from Lilia, leaving Cedric devastated. She then signs the engagement-cutting contract, releasing her engagement from Cedric, and dances happily with Claude as a free woman. After the banquet, Eileen curiously asks Claude about his meeting with Lilia. Insecure, she lists all of Lilia's good qualities. Claude notices her tone and reassures her and jokes that Lilia isn't his type. Eileen learns Lilia wanted to fulfill Claude's wish for peace between humans and demons, as Claude's tender kiss lingers on Eileen's cheek, an unsettling vision of him transforming into a dragon disturbs her reminding her of the horrible fate awaiting him. Sometime after the banquet, in a dream, Keith faithfully accompanies the Demon Lord after being expelled from the Human Kingdom. After waking up, he finds himself confronted by Bezelbeth and Eileen, who reveal his crime of selling demons behind Claude's back. Eileen warns Keith that Claude, if he discovers the betrayal, could transform into his final form and harm Keith in a fit of intense emotion. Keith, horrified, discloses his past. Claude saved him from drowning with magical powers, leading to his demonic nature being exposed and his exile. Keith followed Claude but later found him getting expelled due to Keith's forgery of land ownership papers, discovered by nobles who offered to let it go in exchange for the demons. Sympathetic, Eileen offers help, recruiting Keith to work on her company's cosmetics. However, they learn from Almond that Cedric and his troublemaker fiancé have reappeared. In Claude's room, Lilia reports Keith's crime to Claude with Cedric, but Eileen intervenes, revealing that selling demons, while morally corrupt, is not illegal. Later, Keith apologizes to Claude and requests time to complete Eileen's task before facing punishment. Afterward, Lilia and Bezelbeth watch Keith as he waits for his corrupt buyers. When the buyers appear to get the demons, Keith confronts them about selling his promised land to Eileen. While Keith snatches the accounts book from the uneasy nobles, Eileen wonders why Lily and Cedric didn't show up like in the game. The nobles try taking him out, but Keith can easily defeat them. Cedric and Lilia then unexpectedly appear, leading to a confrontation. Lilia takes out Bezelboth and Cedric captures Eileen. The wounded Keith and Bezelboth report the incident to Claude, who leaves to rescue Eileen. While tied up, Eileen recalls her memories with Claude and fears Cedric's intentions, who appear to have gone insane because of his ego. Eileen, bound and tied next to Cedric, is discovered by Almond. Claude, arriving in a fit of rage, transforms into his final form upon witnessing Eileen's brutal condition. Lilia appears, seemingly planning to eliminate Claude after his transformation. Thankfully, Almond barely frees Eileen, who absorbs Lilia's holy sword, revealing her holy maiden blood. Tearfully, Eileen begs Claude to return to his human form, calming the dragon. Eileen and Claude engage in a heartfelt reunion, but Eileen is embarrassed to find Claude naked in his human form. Later, 
Eileen rests at her house, and Claude is offered the Crown Prince position in exchange for keeping Cedric's crying secret. Though initially disinterested, Claude accepts for Eileen's sake. Eileen and Claude get engaged in a beautiful ceremony, avoiding the first bad ending. However, Eileen's journey continues as a young man appears at an elegant private academy. Now disguised as a male transfer student, Eileen, or Eile, is greeted by the student council vice president, August, who welcomes her to the school. To explain what is happening, a month ago, Claude was rudely interrupted by Keith, who had bad news for him. While flirting with his fiancée, it turned out that a demon named Ashtart was planning on attacking the duke of a neighboring state. If the demon lord didn't show up with his wife's head, the holy sword maiden. Eileen had realized this vassal state was where the second part of the game took place, and would also probably result in a bad ending if Claude somehow got awakened. Thinking about all the female demons that could potentially seduce Claude, Eileen lashes out at her confused husband, who forbade her from coming with him for her own security in the apparently misogynistic birthplace of the holy sword maiden. Of course, fueled by frustration, Eileen couldn't stand the thought of Claude facing potential dangers alone. Hence, she boldly sneaked into Misha Academy, determined to face the threats head on. Now disguised as a boy, she hopes to avoid seeing Claude acting as the Duke in a nearby building. While walking with August, she sees a young girl, Rachel, getting abused by her fiancé. Eileen saves the girl, saying she won't tolerate misogyny like the Sword Maiden before telling her to leave her abusive fiancé. Nearby, Isaac is watching her frustrated by the attention she's drawing. After rescuing Rachel, Eileen finds herself in the student council room in the company of potential romantic partners from the game, Walt and Kyle. After Eileen introduces herself to them, President James, who she recognizes as the game's final boss, also enters. James sits down and recalling her earlier rescue of Rachel, tells Eileen not to get involved in school business too much. Later in class, Eileen meets Rachel who sweetly thanks her. After she leaves, Eileen wonders why the villainous of the second game is seemingly so kind. Afterward, she leaves the class and overhears the main character of the second game, Selena, taking a love letter from a girl to deliver to August. As Eileen recalls that Selena loves Lilia, August approaches her, which also draws Selena close to him. She taunts August for being friends with someone who dislikes Lilia before leaving. Eileen sighs, knowing that Selena hates the new sword maiden, Eileen. She then asks August for a particular favor. As Eileen tries to fit in with her class, in Claude's office, he's wondering if sending letters to Eileen is okay when Keith tells him about Ashtart. Apparently, the current Duke's son is trying to assassinate his nephew, a half-demon who he believes is Ashtart. Back to Eileen in her room, Isaac screams at her for being so loud and bold while she nervously reads a love-filled letter from Claude. Isaac leaves her alone to sort out her feelings, and she later joins a student council to learn more about the school. Eileen suggests forming a security police for school safety, and James makes Eileen investigate a vampire case. Apparently, a female student had her blood sucked and was found unconscious. James also tells Eileen to report this matter to Claude, which she feels nervous about. While Claude is considering getting an Eileen body pillow, a strange duck interrupts his thoughts. This duck gives him the report before leaving without introducing herself. Claude also receives Eileen's letter from Almond, which only contains mere wishes for good health. What the disappointed demon lord didn't know was that it had already taken Eileen a huge amount of courage to write that letter. Later at night, Eileen is patrolling the school with Isaac when they notice Rachel talking to a professor. At the same time, Walt also appears patrolling the area. They watch as the professor corners the poor girl and tries to drug her, saying it'll just be taken as another vampire incident. Eileen jumps out to catch him and the professor runs away. She finds him collapsed in an area with a cloud of thick smoke, apparently demon incense, and is shocked to find James standing in a demon form nearby. Sensing a presence behind her, Eileen suddenly warns James who immediately leaves. Soon, Walt catches up to her angry that she let a demon escape and grabs her shirt. After confirming she's a woman, he confronts Eileen with a gun. Eileen sighs and reveals she knows about Walt and Kyle's identities as demon hunters working for the Merchetta Church. She offers to keep their identities secret if Walt keeps hers, and he agrees before they leave the collapsed professor with no proof to punish him with. After the confrontation, they head inside the school where Rachel tells them that she had consulted the professor 
for some advice for her friend. Unfortunately, when her friend had met the professor, he had drugged her and afterward used that incident as blackmail to demand compensation from Rachel. Walt recalls that the professor has a history of gambling and debt, and Isaac immediately gets ideas to ruin him. He later returns with all the professor's records, thinking about how to frame the professor, using them and ruining him for good. Rachel also comes into the room at this moment, feeling a bit hesitant, and Isaac leaves after seeing her. Eileen tells her that she can trust him, but Rachel reveals that she wasn't worried about that, but about standing up for herself. Thus, she joins Eileen's security police with Walt, who asks Eileen how she'll report the vampire incident to James. Eileen tells him she'll be honest with James before the group leaves to sleep. The next day, Eileen is happily eating a fancy sandwich in the hallway before she realizes a certain girl's love letter has been publicly posted by someone. She tries to get the students looking at it to go away, but they get angry at her. Luckily, Kyle shows up and makes them leave before tearing up the letter. As Kyle turns around to leave, Eileen sees cat food in his pockets and begins following him, embarrassing the cool man. As Eileen gets done with managing the love letter, Walt approaches with bad news, Ashtart's announcement of attacking the school festival. Eileen learns that the school's headmaster is sick and will be replaced at the event by the Duke's proxy, her fiancé, Claude. She knows that on the first day of the event, a sword fighting competition will take place where the church will hide demon incense. The next day is an easier beauty pageant. Now, Eileen must ensure her fiancé doesn't awaken at the event without him finding out about her. The next day before the festival begins, Duck Eileen goes around any male students harassing girls to go dancing with them. She then finds Selena and confronts her for exposing her friend's love letter, but quickly hides when kids around her mention Claude's presence. It seems like Claude is taking time off from important meetings just to get familiar with the academy. As he asks if a duck-shaped student exists, Eileen hides even more but gets jealous when a blushing Selena nervously approaches her fiancé. Selena grabs Claude's hand and offers to show him around, but Claude tells her not to get too close in case she offends his fiancé. Claude charms Selena, all the nearby girls, and even his fiancé in the bushes with his smooth talk and beauty. Later, in a student council meeting, Selena proposes acting as a mediator for the demons with Claude. Eileen jealously tries to prevent this, but to no success. Meanwhile, the entire council begins bashing Eileen, while Selena has a portrait of Claude's apparently ugly fiancé, unaware that she's sitting next to them. Selena then proposes that she'll free Claude from his ugly woman, sulking with rage in a corner. Eileen gets up to leave and all the men also follow her since Selena's romantic talk makes them uncomfortable. Outside, the men patrol with Eileen and have playful banter. However, they suddenly discover a strange smell and check for demon incense. Kyle learns that Eileen knows about his secret identity and is shocked to learn that the church is including incense in tournament prizes to lure demons out. After the mess is cleared, the group returns. James notes that the incense might be making humans more violent, which would explain all the misogyny in the academy. However, he also suspects Eileen and her two strange friends and leaves to report them to the principal. As Eileen leaves to bring James back, he questions if she saw his true form or not. Reassuring James that she is not aligned with the church, Eileen brings out Riven as proof of her friendship with demons. James is surprised and Eileen asks if he knows about Ashtart. To her shock, James is Ashtart. However, someone else seems to be using his name to threaten the duchy. Shifting to Claude's office, he seems ready to deal with Ashtart. But even the lonely demon feels disappointed he can't make new friends. Keith sternly reminds him that he won't allow him to play around on a dangerous day. Finally, the day of the event arrives and the student council goes around dressed as ducks to confiscate any demon incense and mask Eileen's identity. However, she still runs into a disguised Claude who seems interested in the sword fighting competition. She sees Claude making friends with August, who is also excited to battle the demon lord. Claude then notices Eileen and corners her, finding the duck strangely familiar before leaving. Walt then notifies Eileen that the church has hidden incense and lanterns that will be lit at the tournament. To keep Claude away from the incense and prevent him from wreaking havoc upon everyone, Isaac gives Eileen a sleeping drug, which Rachel serves to Claude. As Eileen spies on the sleeping Claude, she notices Selena entering his room, somehow undoing the effects of the sleeping drug. With only one option left, she later approaches Claude in a hallway as a duck. 
Duck Lean repeatedly insults Claude's fiance, leading to her getting stuck in a sword fight with him. The angry demon lord swings hard and Duck Lean barely manages to avoid his attacks and lead them into the lanterns individually. Noticing the commotion, the rest of the ducks and an interested August also chime in. Somehow, all the lanterns get disarmed and all the ducks except Eileen unmask and apologize to Claude. Keith reaches Claude with a terrifying glare as he is about to rip him a new one, but Claude calms down saying he was just taking care of the incense. As Claude prepares to leave, August, who genuinely enjoys sword fighting, asks what became of their fight. The Demon Lord admits that he had lost under his own conditions and leaves the stadium. Afterward, the student council learns that another attack is planned on a beauty pageant. Rachel decides to participate in the investigation and Isaac leaves to prepare a dress for her. Eileen heads down, wondering why the second event is going differently from the game when she encounters a dressed up Rachel. After complimenting Rachel, Eileen asks her if she'll ask Isaac out after the contest. Rachel blushes and nods, revealing that when she felt uncertain about breaking her engagement off, Isaac encouraged her and gave her strength. As the two girls are chatting, Selena intentionally bumps into Rachel, pushing her off the stairs and hurting her leg. Eileen is helpless as the shameless Selena leaves, and Isaac, who had walked in on them, tells the previously excited Rachel to give up on the contest. To console her, Eileen offers to compete in her place. Later, as the student council members wait for their male classmates to dress up, they're shocked when Princess Eileen comes out, ready for the occasion. Of course, the charming lady easily demolishes her competition. When she returns to the boys, they all start questioning their sexuality. But only James is smart enough to ask Eileen for a dance as a lady. As the pairs dance together, Isaac and Rachel watch them together. Isaac shares that he regrets not asking out a girl he liked when he had the chance. But Rachel tells him he did have the strength to comfort her when she needed it. He smiles, finding out Rachel is different from the girl he likes before leaving. Soon, Selena also approaches Rachel, wanting to rub salt all over her wounds. However, Rachel calmly smiles and pretends to feel sorry for Selena's loss to Eileen, which sends her back into a foul mood. After the dance ends and Eileen gets crowned as the winner, she quickly snatches her prize and runs outside. Unfortunately, she finds the prize to have no demon incense. The student council feels like someone pranked them, but they suddenly hear something terrible is going on inside. They rush back to find Selena with some incense in her hands. She lights a stick, which sends the audience running in panic. The situation further escalates when James turns into a demon, his identity shocking his friends, who prepare to take him out. However, Eileen gets in their way to protect him and takes attacks directly from James. She holds his hand to calm him down, experiencing the poor boy's past sorrow and isolation, offering him a place to stay at her side. Eileen manages to finally calm James. After James calms down, Selena keeps calling out for August to take him out. Surprisingly for her, the entire council surrounds her, unhappy that she turned the innocent student into a demon. Selena feels confused, not knowing that the incense in her hand had done it, as she was only following orders. Suddenly, Hundreds of demons soar through the sky, attracted to the smell of incense. Desperate, Eileen tells the students to take cover before taking out the Holy Sword to protect everyone. However, although Claude appears to calm the demons down at this moment, his sharp glares are focused on his disobedient wife-to-be. Later, Eileen returns to the Demon Lord's castle, which she finds enclosed in ice. Shakily entering Claude's room, she hears how Claude can't take this level of disobedience from her. However, Eileen remains stubborn. She had to act to prevent any bad situations from happening to the both of them again. Isaac suggests tying Eileen up with a rope, and Claude agrees, saying he'll punish her later. He then notices all of her friends whom Eileen introduces as James, the talented demon, who seems a bit disappointed with his new role. Rachel, the sweet aide, and August, the knight. She also offers Kyle and Wade to join her, but they seem worried about the church. However, Eileen reassures them that she's already discussed things with them, and they helplessly agree. Eileen realizes that only Selena is missing, but Claude tells her he already captured her since he suspected her. Thinking back, Eileen realizes Selena was clueless about her actions and had only acted on the letters from Ashtart, in quotes. The only person who could have sent her those letters with such knowledge is someone Eileen knows very well. She later approaches Lilia in an enchanted forest, confronting her for also knowing the game's storyline. Eileen is upset that Lilia doesn't care about these people's lives. 
but the cold princess thinks they are merely characters from a dumb game. After their standoff, the two opposing princesses leave with Eileen swearing to take Lilia down. Afterward, Claude and his assistants are thanked by Misha Academy for saving the school from demons, and human-demon relationships grow deeper. Later, Eileen heads into the Imperial Castle with Claude, where he remembers to punish the embarrassed girl with a sweet kiss. As they head in, Eileen remains determined to face all future challenges. Inside one of the castle's hallways, Claude meets Cedric, who feels sympathy for him since the Empress summoned him. Before leaving, Claude advises his brother that women get tired of obedient men who always listen to them. His advice shakes Cedric, who also warns his brother that Lilia is plotting something sinister. Meanwhile, the student council gang is at a black market auction where demon incense and demons are being sold. The group is disappointed that, once again, Eileen snuck out without Claude's permission. They split up to free the demons and Eileen heads into a dark room with August outside to gather proof of the activities. As he enters it, he sees a cloaked man restraining Eileen. The man deflects August's sword with magic, revealing he's a mage. He claims that he's a friend looking for Claude and offers Eileen a list of all the attending guests. As the auction holders knock at their door, furious for getting intruders, Eileen has no choice but to trust the mage before jumping off a balcony. Midway, she gets caught by Claude, who teases her for disappearing once again. Claude takes Eileen back to his castle, where he seems determined to make her his wife through and through. As a flustered Eileen points out that they're in a room with all their awkward assistants watching, Claude tells her he'll simply throw them out. However, Eileen finally manages to catch a break when the mage introduces himself as Eliphas Levi. Descending from a tribe of magic users, Eliphas's people were all imprisoned on allegations of being involved with demons. He requests Claude to help out his people, and Claude agrees, despite Isaac's protests not to trust a powerful stranger. He then sends Eileen back home after telling her he loves her, and she relaxes in a lovely bath. Inside, she thinks about the current story, which is from a fan game. In the fan game though, Eliphas is the final boss, and Claude is a usable character, which reminds Eileen of something horrible. She tries contacting the demons with no success, and Almond appears to tell her Claude has vanished. Suddenly, Eileen's father enters, informing her that Claude got stabbed in the stomach. This news is almost too much for Eileen, who has lost his words of love fresh in her mind, and her fears are finally confirmed when her dad tells her that Claude is alright, but has forgotten all his memories. Thus, Eileen immediately heads out to meet the king and empress with her father, who tells her that Claude will now be treated as a human child and be given a new wife. Eileen is enraged by the surprisingly young-looking empress's rude words, who announces that she'll soon hold a ball for her grandson. Eileen's father feels insulted that he wasn't even invited to the ball when Lilia appears with Cedric and cutely begs the Empress to have mercy on Eileen. At her request, the Empress gives in and the not-so-sweet Lilia looks at Eileen with a provocative gaze. Eileen stares back, unwilling to back down from her challenge at all. As Lilia leaves with Cedric, he feels uncertain about the whole situation. As Cedric wonders who would even attack his brother, Lilia realizes he's worried about his fiancée getting taken away by his brother. Bored of him, she leaves and Cedric recalls his brother's precious advice. Meanwhile, back at the Demon Lord's castle, Eileen promises Keith and Bezelbuth that she'll bring their lord back as her husband. She later heads to where Claude is staying despite knowing she'll be executed if she gets found out. Eliphas assists Eileen in getting down to the house and bypassing the magic barrier, and they encounter Cedric standing in front of them. Surprisingly, he doesn't seem to be in the mood to report them, leading Eileen to Claude. She sees her lover lying on a bed and holds his hand with relief. With a cold shock, she hears Claude call Lilia's name before realizing he has truly forgotten everything. Eileen pulls her old tactic of seducing him by asking him for marriage again, but this time, Claude seems to be wary of her and requests her to call off their engagement since he doesn't want to be a crowned prince as a demon. This angers Eileen, who informs Claude she is literally putting her life on the line just to meet him. The kind demon then requests her to return, but the stubborn Eileen gets even closer to him. As Eliphas reminds her that the patrol is returning, Eileen cuts off a strand of Claude's hair before leaving after declaring her undying love for him. The recovering Claude seems to be overwhelmed by his blunt fiancé and wonders if it's fate that they're meeting again. Later. Eileen returns to the castle, overjoying the demons with Claude's hair. 
Despite him losing his memory, she remains confident that Claude is trapped in her love no matter what, making Isaac sympathize with the innocent man. However, Eileen then learns that Cedric and Lilia plan on accompanying Claude on a nationwide inspection. She wonders how she can make Claude remember her in time before Lilia makes him officially break their engagement, and Eliphas suggests bringing demons to him, which should awaken his past nature. As Isaac and the others plan for the inspection, Eileen leaves to warn Claude. She tells him to keep her meetings a secret and tries to get all lovey-dovey in hopes of seducing him. Claude pushes her away, also refusing her homemade apple pie. When he notices Lilia coming in, he quickly hides Eileen away before meeting her. Cedric also enters with her and watches as Lilia tries to offer cookies to Claude. Eileen furiously watches her actions while Claude rejects Lilia before she leaves. Eileen then comes out and leaves the room after giving her wasted pie to Cedric. Outside, she feels heartbroken that her love is one-sided. Eliphas suggests showing Claude her pitiful face, but they suddenly encounter Almond, who reports a fight in the castle. There, Eileen finds August and Selina arguing since August brought her there. Eileen asks Selina if she's trying to find Cedric. She knows that Selina was merely trying to get close to Lilia so she could have a chance of becoming Cedric's mistress. August is surprised by this information, but Selina recognizes Eileen's intellect and admits it. Eileen then tells August to return Selina's stuff and let her go after telling her she'll always be available to help. August feels upset that Selina will just randomly marry someone and leaves to talk with her. Downstairs, Selina is waiting with Rachel, saying that she had only planned to get close to Lilia, but had found out about her evil nature. This made her think about Cedric for protection. At present, as she's about to leave the castle, August catches up to her and apologizes, but Selina doesn't seem to care as she coldly leaves. A while later, the inspection day arrives. Eileen disguises herself as a boy once more and somehow becomes the head of Claude's guard. He recognizes her and scolds her for pulling a stunt, wishing for her to stay away from him. Cedric also appears and tells Claude that Eileen is just that stubborn. However, the demon lord angrily leaves and Cedric tells Eileen she's making him uncomfortable. Eileen is disappointed by this, but heads to meet Eliphas, who tells her a man called Lester is leading the inspection. Eileen recognizes Lester from the game and figures that Lilia tamed him. Meanwhile, Claude enters his carriage with Lilia and the inspection begins. As Claude makes awkward small talk with Lilia, the carriage suddenly flips over. Lilia crashes into Claude's arms as a massive demon lifts up the whole thing. The demon runs with Claude shouting that he'll protect his king. Claude is confused by this, and traveling near him, Eileen rushes ahead to protect the demon from Imperial hunters. The demon gets hit by tranquilizers and falls asleep, while Eliphas protects the carriage. Claude comes out of the carriage and the demons approach him. Suddenly, the massive demon gets up and heads out for Claude. Noticing this, Eileen immediately stands between them. Claude orders it to stand down, and the demon gets confused that he's now giving him a different order. He tells Eileen to stop bothering his master which genuinely hurts her feelings for the first time ever. Heartbroken, she lets the demon attack her but is saved by Bezelbuth, who mocks the dumb ogre for acting on Claude's feelings. He leaves after telling Claude the demons will not stay if he doesn't need them, and Eileen turns around, sad that he wants her gone. She sees Lilia lying behind him and thinks there is no chance Claude will reciprocate her feelings. Before Claude can explain, Eileen turns around to slap the demon lord. With tears in her eyes, she yells that she'll never see him again or attend the ball since he hates her so much. After inspection, Claude is seen sitting alone, thinking about what happened with Eileen. He is surprised when Keith and Bezelbuth show up at his doorstep. They greet Claude and ask if he's truly meant to be so harsh to Eileen. Claude protests saying he just wanted to keep her safe, watching his attendants tend to his room. Claude seems to return to his former self and orders them to bring Eileen to the ball. Meanwhile, back at the castle, the husbandless Eileen scrambles to fill out papers for a living, shamelessly using the excuse that the demons would be sad without her in Claude's house. Suddenly, she receives a dress and orders from Claude to bring her to the ball. Eileen is initially surprised but rejects Claude's offer for being too late, even if the thought of him falling in love with her again makes her heart swoon. However, a cute dance from all the little demons convinces her to go. After getting over her emotions, Eileen gets dressed up and heads to the ball prepared to make Claude pay for what he did. Her stunning appearance makes everyone's jaw drop as Claude beholds a familiar duck lean, now in an elegant dress. 
To Claude's dismay, she points out that he never asked her to show her face before he carries off his dumb yet cute lover. He takes her to a quiet place outside, where Claude acts on his desire to hug her. Eileen pretends to be angry, but doesn't reject Claude, who whispers her name seductively. This makes her jump, and Claude realizes how innocent and inexperienced his fiance really is. She tries to act all tough, but melts when Claude tells her he still loves her, even after losing his memories. Eileen tells Claude she won't forgive him so easily before proceeding to quickly forgive him after he offers to let her punish him. She tells Claude that she needs to fix her makeup from the mask before she can dance with him. As Rachel fixes a happy Eileen's makeup, Eliphas unexpectedly appears behind her with a knife to her throat. He reveals he didn't expect the power of love to bring Claude back and tells Eileen his mistress has given orders to separate them. As Eileen protests, he shows her a captured almond as blackmail before pouring demon incense on her dress. Then, Eliphas calls guards in who take her away and present her to the Empress for her crimes. They claim that Eileen was planning on attacking everyone at the banquet with demons, making sure to add more spice in by alleging that she cheated on her fiancé with Eliphas. Eliphas admits to this and begs for mercy. Claude is surprised by this news, but asks Eileen to deny it, saying he'll believe it from her mouth. Unexpectedly, Eileen acts like she doesn't even care for Claude and admits to cheating on him. Suddenly, Almon breaks out of his prison to inform Claude she's lying. However, at this moment, a bolt of magic strikes, and the sound of a falling bird fills the otherwise silent room. Eileen watches with pure horror, and Claude immediately gets enraged at Almond's death. Eileen makes Claude stop his rampage before realizing he remembers everything from the past now. A panic ensues at the castle, and the king orders to arrest Eileen for turning his son back into a demon. As everyone lunges to attack Eileen's group, Claude barely teleports them away with his magic. Without wasting time, Eileen asks Isaac about an escape route for them and the demons. The group then heads into a massive underground labyrinth made by Isaac's efforts. After Keith uses a spell to act as Claude's replacement, the demons get ready to escape. Meanwhile, back at the Imperial Palace, Lilia approaches Claude. She seems fascinated that she cannot tame him even if he's a supporting character. So, she decides to forcefully make him obey her once again with the Holy Sword. Realizing she was the one who took away his memories, Claude is surprised but unable to avoid the hit from Lilia. Back to Eileen's group, they make it to the surface where Rachel, August, James, and Ribbon head out to act as decoys while Eileen moves out. Unfortunately, Eliphas easily spots her on her flying demon, who takes her hostage. Pulling out all the stops, Eileen summons her holy sword and jumps off the demon with him. Both Eliphas and Eileen crash and are captured by the Levi tribe's men, who lock Eliphas up for betraying their race and working for someone else. After imprisoning the two, the men head out to capture Claude for themselves and take out the Empress. Helpless, Eliphas reveals to Eileen that he is actually working for the Empress, but listens to Lilia because of his feelings for her. After getting mocked by Eileen for falling for Lilia's obvious act, Eliphas reveals that somehow, Lilia had recovered the Holy Sword and gave it to him to erase Claude's memories. Eileen then asks Eliphas why he isn't breaking out of the jail with his magic, and he responds that her Holy Sword has absorbed all of his power. Realizing she has the magic now, Eileen uses her sword to break free before approaching Eliphas. She is still unwilling to forgive him for what happened to Almond, but a regretful Eliphas takes out and gives her his left eye as a sign of loyalty. Eileen learns that the eye gem can be used to free Claude, so she finally takes Eliphas out of his prison. Meanwhile, in the Imperial City, Rachel's group is about to get cornered by knights when Selina unexpectedly comes to their rescue. Back to Eileen, she flies with Eliphas, wondering why the Empress is even keeping his tribe hostage. Eliphas tells her it's the most shallow yet unexpected reason, using their magic to maintain her youth. They with Isaac and Keith, who have a horde of demons with them. Eileen makes the demons stop and orders Bezelbeth to keep them out and protect them, leaving Claude's safety to her. Suddenly, a portal opens as James talks to Eileen. He informs her that they've made it to Claude, but the demon lord is unresponsive while surrounded by demon incense. Eliphas tells Eileen that she must insert his gem into the Empress's magical device to save Claude. She asks Selina about the location of this device since she's the closest to Cedric. The girl has no intentions of doing it, 
but reluctantly reveals the tower it's likely in upon August's request. Now armed with the knowledge she needs, Eileen makes it to the North Tower with Eliphas, where she encounters a familiar character in the final corridor. Lilia taunts Eileen about the new story before the girl prepares to battle with their holy swords. Meanwhile, back in the desert with Keith and Bezelbuff, Jasper's group also appears, ready to help Claude however they can. In the Imperial Palace, we also see Cedric quietly heading somewhere. Back to the two princesses, a catfight of divine proportions begins. Somehow, Lilia gains the upper hand and begins absorbing Eileen's sword. Gloating about her victory, she mocks Eileen but is shocked when Eileen reveals the true power of the Holy Sword Maiden, love. <laughs> yes, as cheesy as it gets, I know. However, Eileen seriously demonstrates this power by calling on Claude's power and using it against Lilia to defeat her once and for all. Eliphas rushes towards the tower's locked door, but is unable to open the magic seal on it. Lilia seems to be prepared for this and laughs at an exhausted Eileen before taking down the tired Eliphas. As things look truly hopeless, the best miracle that could have happened suddenly happens. Almond shows up in all his glory and takes out Lilia and the seal with a powerful magic attack. This gives Eliphas a chance to rush in and insert the gem, as the horrified empress spontaneously turns back into the old hag that she is. Unfortunately, the trouble isn't over yet, as Lester shows up with his guard. Thankfully, Claude finally reappears after having woken up and assumes authority in the now sick emperor's place. Cedric also suddenly appears and confesses to his and his fiancée's crimes. Now having resolved the problems, Claude calls over Eileen. She jumps into his arms with tearful eyes, and Claude finally marries his lover after the drama ends. Using his authority as monarch, he pardons the Levi tribe and heals Eliphas's eye since he spared Almond by putting him in a suspended state. Cedric and Lilia also get their bittersweet ending as a prisoner couple, while Claude and Eileen unite with all their friends, having conquered the world with all of their combined love and efforts. Wow, such a nice story with so many wonderful characters. I'm truly wishing Claude and Eileen the best. Watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one.